strong. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10, you've got to make it in your mind that you're going to be strong. If you don't do that, you'll be taken down as a minister. You'll be taken down as a servant of God. You'll be broken into a thousand pieces and left in the dirt because you did not enter the battle realizing that you had to be strong. Ephesians 6 verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You've got to be strong in the Lord. You've got to get into, the, into God and get strong in him. If a bishop tells you that you shouldn't be preaching, if a, a local minister's fraternal and you go there and most of the ministers are liberal and don't believe in the Bible and they shun you, you got to be strong. you got to be strong in the power of his might. Ephesians 6.10 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You've got to be strong. You can't be intimidated by a bishop who may look down at you because he thinks you're sound in the faith and he's a liberal and he is feeling antagonistic towards you because he knows that he should be preaching the Bible as the Word of God and he hasn't been doing it. You should not be intimidated by local ministers who do not believe the Word of God. How dare they intimidate you? Who are they to intimidate you, a man of God who is standing on the Word of God and believes it as the Word of God? Be strong in the Word. Be strong in your God. Ephesians 6 10 finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might the enemies of God are railing against ministers of the gospel they are coming against the ministers of gospel and trying to intimidate the ministers of the gospel you must be strong in the Lord and resist the opposition for you are there set before the people in your local congregation by God to do a work and whatever opposition comes to you God commands you to be strong Paul Romans chapter 1 16 says I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God up for salvation for everyone who believes Paul says I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation of everyone who believes so often in major denominations, Orthodox ministers will tiptoe around and almost be that they're Orthodox, that they are evangelical, that they believe the Bible is the Word of God. Ministers today in the climate of the church are scared to be bold for the gospel because, oh, we don't do that now, Minister. We're, we're into the emergent church. We're, we're into postmodernism now, Minister. We're trying new ways to do church, Minister. We want children's services, Minister. We don't want your preaching, Minister. We've got new moralities coming in that the government's put in, and we want to put it in our church, Minister. We, we, we're not into that anymore. It's out of date. We don't want the, this word preached to us anymore. And so the ministers, the preachers of the word are, are intimidated by this secular culture and the secularization within the church. And ministers are tiptoeing and they're ashamed to preach. And many of the retired ministers who have preached the word of God faithfully are made to, seem, as, made to be seen as if they're dinosaurs. And what is happening, my friends, we, have, we are listening. We are listening. We are listening to the Philistines. Yeah? We are listening to the Philistines who were taking away our heritage, who were taking away the glory of God. We are listening to them. And so, old ministers who preach the word, rise up and be strong and do not be ashamed. God called you to preach the word of God. And even though you are a retired minister, you have a wealth of experience and you must give it to the church and you must preach the word of God. And if you're a young minister today and you've gone into the ministry, whether it be the Anglican, the Methodist or the Baptist and your local superior officer, whether it be a bishop or a superintendent, looks down on you because you're an evangelical 
dare not be intimidated by your bishop or by any of your area reps if they are liberal you be proud in the God of your Bible and in the Word of God and in the gospel proud in a humble sense if you know what I mean do not let the Philistines put you down do not let the Philistines make you feel timid there is only one God there is only one gospel it is the only way to be saved and if all the bishops stand against you and say that it is not the gospel then you stand against all the bishops if all the superintendents in the Baptist denomination say the Bible is not the Word of God you as a minister will stand against them because God stands with you and one man is a majority against a thousand bishops or a thousand ministers who are liberal you stand for God against the Philistines you sound an alarm for truth you proclaim the word of God fearlessly no matter what comes against you stop tiptoeing around your denomination stop tiptoeing around your church as a minister preach the word of God for the glory of God I say to you do it they are not going to pat you on the back they're not going to say our minister is bold for Jesus I am not telling you to go out and cause problems against your bishops I am not calling you to to have problems with your area reps I am not doing that I am telling you in the name of God you be not ashamed of the gospel do not be ashamed of Christ do not be intimidated by the enemies of God do not be intimidated by the Philistines do not be intimidated by them they may throw you to the lions they may throw you in prison they may take away your ministry they may kick you out of your manse they may take away your salary they may de destroy your reputation but at the end of the day I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation and at the end of the day you are called by God and God is with you and you have a responsibility to proclaim that word and stop tiptoeing around everybody and be bold for Jesus amen that goes for the Calvinist that goes for the Arminian that goes for the charismatic you are all called to preach the Word of God you get back into that pulpit and stop being intimidated by the liberals stop being intimidated by the secular culture stop being intimidated by the Philistines who don't want your preaching and you preach it you get back into that pulpit and you lift the voice for Jesus and you lift it and you preach it okay you preach it and you never be intimidated again I don't say go around cocky I don't say go around thinking you're something because you're nothing I say go around and don't be ashamed of your faith don't be ashamed of your Lord don't be ashamed of the Word of God yeah you preach it my friend never let a bishop put you down never let a superintendent put you down never let any congregation put you down if they don't believe the Word of God if they don't believe it on them you stand there and you're a servant of the living God and you have to preach his message yeah so you get up there and you preach when you're you students in the seminaries and you're hearing your seminary professors ripping into the Bible because they don't believe in inerrancy and they try to make you look stupid and you have students in your seminary that are not evangelical laughing and mocking you you don't have your head down as if it's shame no you hold your head up high because you are a servant of God I am not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God for salvation unto everyone who believes and every theological student who's been intimidated by seminary professors who couldn't preach if they tried but they are clever and they have these clever ideas and they attack the Bible and try to make you look stupid don't you be intimidated as a 
So what I can say, just because they can quote Derrida, just because they can quote feminist theologians, just because they can quote the latest th philosophical fashion, so what? It ain't going to save a soul. It's only gospel. It's only Christ crucified. It's only him dying on a cross and shedding his blood for our sin. It's only him that will save us. And that's the only message that the church needs. Christ crucified. A ten-year-old boy could preach it. You don't need a theological education at the end of the day. It's helpful. I've got one. My friends have one. I'm not against it. But don't be taken in by your seminary professors who think that their knowledge is what you need. You need to learn from what you can from them. But at the end of the day, if they turn that knowledge against the gospel, then you stand with the gospel and you don't be a sh Amen. It's time you stop being ashamed. It's time you started be, being bold for Jesus. The Philistines have come in. How dare they come in and make you intimidated as a minister of the gospel? Who are they? Who are they? Who are they? We stand with the living God. That's who we stand with. And he's with us and he will give us strength and power and he will give us hope and he will give us peace and he will look after us and he will be with us. Who are these seminary professors? Who are these bishops? Who are these superintendents who will come and stand against our God? Who are they? They're nothing. Their ideas and opinions will be out of date within 10 years. Our gospel will always be up to date. And a living God. And bring salvation to souls. Amen. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. Come on now, get your Bibles out. You reformed preachers out there, get your Bible out and let's get into the Word of God, eh? 